okay so hi everyone i am sahil gubbar working as a software consultant in java competency is here going to present a session on data mesh principles so we will be going to deep dive into the principles of the data mesh i hope you guys are excited so let us see some knowledge certificates so join the session 5 minutes prior to the session time as we start from the time and conclude on time make sure to submit a constructive feedback for all the sessions as it is very helpful for me to improve my sessions in future keep your mobile devices in silent mode and feel free to move out of the session in case you need to attend any urgent call also i request everyone to avoid any chit chat during the session okay so let us see the agenda for today's session so first we are going to have a quick overview of data mesh we will see what is data mesh why it is important and how it is benefit for modern business success next we will see the principles of data mesh we will see the four principles the first one is domain oriented data ownership and architecture in which we will see the journey from traditional approach to the domain oriented approach what was the traditional approach why traditional approach was not feasible and why do we need to switch to the domain oriented approach also we will see some key benefits for the data ownership as well next we will see data as a product principle why we are treating the data as a product and not any secondary outcome and we will also see some steps to implement data as a product principle after that we will see the third principle which is self serve data infrastructure platform we will understand the importance of self serve data platform in data mesh then we will see the fourth principle which is federated governance we will understand the importance of federated governance and how we can implement federated governance in data mesh not only that we will also see some real life use cases of data mesh okay so let us go further so let's have a quick overview of data mesh so data mesh is an innovative approach to the data architecture or data management and it has been gaining significant attention in recent years uh, it was introduced by zamak digani in 2019 and he represent data mesh as a paradigm shift in big data management that moves away from centralized data lakes to a distributed architecture so data mesh is basically a new way of managing the data that basically focuses on decentralizing control so instead of having one central team that will be handling all the data here each business unit or i would say each team would be handling its own data for example like we have marketing sales finance they manages their own data by handling its collection maintenance and delivery and it also ensures that the data from each domain is readily available and it can also be used by the other parts of the organization as well so unlike traditional models where we were having only one single data warehouse or data lake there is not that in the case of the data mesh we will also see the traditional approach in upcoming slides but in data mesh we have distributed data management and accountability across various domains within the organization so that is what data mesh is also uh, data mesh improves the data user experience as well because if you talk about like business users or the data analysts they get a lot of benefit from the data mesh architecture especially they are easily able to access the data as data mesh decentralizes the data management so it makes more straightforward for them to access the data from the various domains without going to the central gatekeeper and it also promotes the data standardization as well by setting some consistent guidelines across various domains data mesh ensures that the data should be in a uniform way so that everyone could access the data easily so now let us see how we can achieve these benefits of the data mesh by implementing the principles of the data mesh so we have four principles the first one is domain oriented distributed architecture the second one is data as a product the third one is self service infrastructure as a platform and the fourth one is federated computational governance we will see all of these principles in detail and the first one is domain oriented distributed architecture 
so coming to next so before understanding what is domain distributed architecture it is important to understand what was the traditional approach and why do we need to switch to the domain oriented approach okay so this is a simple architecture for the traditional approach here we can see that we have multiple uh, departments like we have merchants which contain list of products we have marketing which has site analytics we have inventory management and users which contain some number of registered users and payment information related to that users we also have a centralized data storage system that is managed by a central data team which is responsible for handling all these related data tasks and we have data analysts which consumes the data and do some insight reports on it so how the whole things actually works so these various departments send their data or i would say produce their data to one large central storage system like a data warehouse or a data lake where the data of the whole organization is stored and is maintained by a central data team so it's the responsibility of the central data team to ensure that the data is updated for each and every department like cleaning organizing and maintaining the data for all of these departments would be done by the central data team and then analyst consumes the data from the central data team to do some report generation on that so now the question arises the departments are able to produce the data and analysts are also able to consume the data from the central data team then what's the issue in this approach or i would say what the problem could occur in this approach while using the traditional approach so can anyone tell from the audience what could the problem occur in this approach anyone i know some of guys know the problem that could occur in this approach anyone okay i guess silence means nobody knows okay so the main issue in this approach is that we as i said we have a centralized data storage that will be handling the data for all the for the whole organization so what if the central data storage or i would say the data warehouse has some issue or like the data warehouse is not working on the current time then how the analyst would be able to consume the data for these various organizations like if the data warehouse is not working then the analyst won't be able to consume the data correct so in this uh, case the central data uh, storage is acting as a single point of failure because even if the analyst want to consume the data for even any of the one of the department you won't be able to consume it as the data warehouse is not working so in that case the central data team would not be able to consume the data or you know, would not be able to organize the data for any of the departments so that's the biggest issue in this approach so now let us see some other limitations for the traditional approach so as i said in traditional data setup all the data management is handled by a single data team or the department so it will be very difficult to manage all the tasks bottlenecks and delays when the departments need the data or reports they must request for them from the central data team and if the central data team is busy or if the requests are complex there might be significant delays so what if uh, there are some complex queries for any of the one department and the other departments are all also in line to get the data then it will difficult for the central data team to handle the task for the different different departments because it he would be busy i mean say the department would be busy in organizing only one query so that would be difficult for central data team next is scalability challenges as the organization grows or the amount of the data increases so scaling up the central system can be challenging and expensive so it would be difficult for the central data team to scale up the whole system for the various organizations next is limited domain expertise uh, so the central data team might not have deep knowledge about each department specific needs so yeah the lack of domain specific knowledge can affect the quality of the data solutions provided because the departments may be possible that departments might not get the useful data as the central data team don't have enough knowledge for the complex queries for any of the one department 
so that's the biggest issue as well next is delayed insights because the data has to go through the several stages of processing in the central system then there can be significant delays in the insights and reports generated by the analyst so these were some of the limitations of the traditional approach and now let us see how domain oriented data structure can address these challenges so if anyone has any doubt till now they can ask any questions okay so let us progress further okay so in this domain oriented data architecture we can clearly see that we have removed the centralized data storage from the architecture and now instead of having one central data team we are having different different domains for handling their own data i mean like now the analyst can directly consume the data from any one of the departments they do not need any central data team to consume the data for different different departments just they can go directly to any one of the departments and consume their data even if if one of the uh, queries is very complex for any of the department like i would say for merchant the queries are very complex still uh, in the meantime the analyst can consume the data for the other departments as well so uh, they won't have to uh, like re restricted on any one of the departments for handling the queries so that was the beauty of the domain oriented data architecture now let us see how different different domains take the ownership of their data yeah so consider like an e-commerce application where we have different different domains like sales domain finance domain customer domain and inventory domain so now instead of having one central data team we have segregated the team for different different domains now we have sales team for the sales domain finance team for the finance domain customer service team for the customer domain and inventory management team for the inventory domain so uh, now the teams would take the ownership of their data according to the business needs now suppose uh, if i talk about the sales team so sales team would be responsible for managing tasks like uh, sales transactions customer orders customer related information all the tasks would be performed by the sales team and it's the responsibility of the sales team to ensure that the data is accurate and at good quality to be delivered by the uh, by to other domain teams as well so if i talk about like inventory management domain similarly they would handle the uh, stock levels order histories and maintain the transactions as well so that all data would be done by the inventory management team and the customer team would be responsible for uh, support tickets taking regular feedback from the customers so basically uh, different different teams are there to take the ownership of the domains so that the data can be easily accessible by the analyst and by the other domains as well so this approach decentralizes the data management by assigning data ownership to the specific domains such as sales or finance rather than having a central data authority as we discussed domains data domains are individual units of the data that represent specific business functions or processes within an organization and each domain would be independently handling their own data though it has some challenges also like maintaining uniform data quality and seamless integrations across different domains might be one of the challenges and it uh, they also need to ensure that the data should remain consistent and the, the security as well as the regulatory compliance throughout the organization other than that efficiently managing data flow and avoiding duplication between domains so now the data is distributed across different different domains so it might be possible that data is duplicated within multiple domains so to ensure that the data should be unique within different domains then is also a challenge for the domain ownership now let us see some benefits of the domain oriented architecture so we have first benefit which is enhanced data quality and it says that data managed by domain experts ensure that accuracy and relevance so now as we know that data is distributed across different different domains so it's like more it's more likely to be accurate and relevant and they can ensure that the data is correctly recorded updated as well as it is properly used for the data access by the other domains as well next one is increased agility faster response to the changes and business needs 
and the next one is scalability independent scaling of domains allows flexible growth so now the different domains can scale their data independently of one another like if one of the departments wants more storage so they can increase their resources or the processing power more effectively without even I mean, without affecting the other departments next one is uh, reduce bottlenecks less dependency on the centralized authority minimizes the processing delays so this we have discussed that so we don't have no more dependencies on the central data authority so the next one is simplified maintenance maintenance and updates can be performed within each domain independently which reduces the complexity of managing a centralized system other than that seamless data sharing between domains enhances the teamwork yes because uh, domains yes domains handles their own data but they also need to share the data between multiple domains which enhances the teamwork if i talk about like marketing team has some insight from the customer data so they can use their information uh, to target their customers and better results in the productivity for the organization so now we have second principle which is the data as a product principle uh, up till now, anyone has any questions? Okay. So uh, I guess I actually so. Okay. So our next principle is data as a product principle. So traditionally, if you talk about the data was often being seen as a secondary result and not as a primary asset. Basically, uh, there was only one central data team which was responsible for handling all the tasks like cleaning, organizing, and making the data available to the other teams. So data was uh, seen like a secondary outcome and uh, it was just a byproduct for the daily operations. But now if I talk about the data as a product principles, so it says that we will be treating the data with the same intent just like we are treating any other product. Like suppose we are selling any other product to the customers. So same, we will do the same thing with the data as well. Data will be, uh, data will be actively updated and data will be actively maintained and it will be updated as per the business needs and it should be delivered to the customers so, such that uh, the data is kept in the user's mind. I mean, each data product should be kept in with the user's mind so that it should ensure the data is in high quality and it should be accessible by the other domains as well. So that's the beauty of the data as a product principle. And it also provides a systematic versioning. If you talk about earlier, we don't have systematic versioning and users were not able to keep the track changes and update the changes as per the business needs. But now the data can be tracked and as well as user can adapt the recent changes and make their modifications according to the business requirements. So that is one of the benefits for the data, data as a product principle. Next one is enhanced documentation and transparency. Detailed documentation and metadata are provided for each data product, which includes information on the data sources and transformations and some usage guidelines. So there are different, different documentations for each data product so that different domains can easily access the data and users guidelines is also provided to the different domains. Next one is continuous improvement. Data products are continuously defined by taking regular feedback from the customers and the changes requirements so that it can evolve the business needs. Okay, so let us see some key characteristics of the data as a product principle. Each data product has a dedicated owner responsible for its life cycle and quality and data products are managed to ensure that it is in high accuracy, completeness, as, as well as reliable. Data products are easily discoverable through comprehensive catalogs and search functionalities. So as I said, there are different, different documentations available so that data can be easily accessed and can be easily delivered to other domains as well. Next one is self-serve access. Users can access and interact with the data products independently without needing intermediaries. So this we have discussed. Next one is interoperability. Data products are designed to integrate and work seamlessly with the other data products and systems. 
and this can be achieved through standard formats, common protocols, and designing for easy integrations. So data products doesn't exist in isolation. They need to work well together with each other, basically, so that they can take regular feedbacks from the customer and data products should be continuously involved. Now let us see the steps through which we can implement the data as a product principle. So our first step is to identify the data products. So our first step is to define the data sets that can be treated as a data product, which includes the transactional data, customer data, and the analytics reports. The next step is to ensure that we need to assign the ownership as well to the data products. Now, appoint the data product owners or the teams responsible for each data product. These individuals or domains should be accountable for the quality, availability, and the life cycle of their data products. After assigning the ownership to the different, different data products, our next step is to create roadmaps for each data product. So a roadmap should be defined for each data product, which outlines its development, enhancements, and maintenance plans. And it should also include timelines and milestones as well as key deliverables. Next step is to ensure the data quality. Define the data quality standards and metrics for each data product and it should also include accuracy, completeness, consistency as well as timeliness. Now after that, the, we should also create and manage the metadata as well. There should be comprehensive metadata for each data product, which includes the data definition, source information, and the usage guidelines. Next step is to monitor and improve. After following all these above steps, we need to make sure that we improve our data as a product because uh, we need to make sure that the data should be updated on a regular basis. We should always keep track of the changes and we should always take regular feedback from the customers as well. And we should also track the performance metrics related to the data product usage, such as user satisfaction, query performance, and data freshness. So this was data as a product. Anyone has any questions till now? Anything? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. So next principle is self-serve data infrastructure as a platform. So now we know that uh, what are domains and how we can assign the ownership to the different, different domains and how we will be treating the data as a product. Then after that, basically we need a platform so that different, different domains can work on it. So let us see how it works. So we have a self-serve data platform which provides us a user-friendly system that allows individuals, team to independently access, manage, and analyze data without heavy reliance on the centralized IT or data engineering teams. And it integrates tools for data ingestion, transformation, storage, and visualization. So basically, uh, let's say, suppose you are in a marketing department and you want to analyze your customer behavior. So you don't need to wait for the first the IT team to pull the data or any central data team to pull the data for you. Instead, you can just log into a user friendly interface that will give you some data resources and the other accessibilities for the resources to work upon. Like they will provide some tools for the analysis or tools from creating reports or dashboards. So that's uh, that's a benefit of the self-serve data platform so that different different domains can individually perform the operations on the data without the need of the central data team. And it also provides us some standard tools like some standardized APIs for the data ingestion, transformation, and consumption. And it also provides some schema management tools, BI tools for the dashboards, ELT, ETL tools, and other integration platforms. And the advantage of the data mesh, uh, the self-serve data platform is that it has a feature called automation. So it provides us on-demand creation of data storage, processing, and serving environments. So now suppose many routine tasks are handled automatically, like if you need to create the, or you need to update the sales records on a regular basis, so you can create an automation process for that. 
so automation can be done through the platform next is scalability distributed responsibility for the data management so now the data is distributed to different different domains so the platform has the ability to handle growing data volumes and varieties more effectively if we talk about the implementation part for the self serve data platform then implementing a self serve platform is a journey as it requires a shift in organization culture investment in the right technologies if it is done in the right direction then it can of course dramatically increase the speed of processing data decision making so now we have the fourth principle which is the last principle federated governance principle let's talk about this and how it can help us to achieve more benefits in modern business so now we know that different different domains can share their data but uh, the issue is do they can easily share their data i mean is there any is there no restriction for sharing the data of course there is some restrictions of sharing the data as well so for that federated governance comes into the picture federated governance means that instead of having a central authority that will be handling all the tools and the responsibilities for sharing the data here multiple teams or the domains will take this responsibility so earlier we are having we were having only one central data team which will be creating rules for sharing the data but now we have different different domains as i said so different different domains would take the responsibility for creating the policies and the standards for the data sharing across different different domains so that's what federated governance principle is if uh, like if i talk about the key points of the federated governance principle so first one is the decentralized data management which says that domain teams can manage their own data products including the quality security and compliance okay so domains can manage their own data products but they are also certain guidelines for the security and the quality of maintaining the data products as well and that uh, guidelines are covered under the federated governance principle next one is common standards and policies while each team handles its own data everyone follows a shared set of rules and the guidelines yes so uh, as each team handles their data but there are common guidelines for each domain and that common guidelines should be followed by every domain for the business needs this ensures that data for different departments can still work together smoothly yeah yes. consistent quality and compliance teams ensure that their data meets the same quality and the legal standards so basically uh, through following the policies and the common standards the team ensure that the data should be delivered in good quality and the quality should remain consistent for the each domain next one is the access control and security the data is protected from unauthorized access while still being accessible to those who need it yeah so the main point is the security purpose as i said uh, different domains want to share their data to the other domains so uh, at that point of time security comes into the picture because if one domain wants to access every uh, other domain then uh, there are some policies that provide us the what part of the data can be accessed by the other team or what part of the data can be accessed by the whole organization as well so these all oh, whole the parts that can be accessed by the different different domains and the whole organizations are mentioned in the policies and the standards cross functional collaboration facilitates seamless integration and data sharing across different domains so yeah collaboration between different teams facilitates seamless integration and data sharing across different domains so now let us see how we can implement federated governance in data mesh so we have few steps to follow the federated governance in data mesh the first one is define governance principles and objectives establish the goals of the federated governance within the data mesh this includes ensuring data quality compliance with the regulations and interoperability across different domains now the second step is to ensure the governance roles and the responsibilities so as we discussed the team should form a central governance team or body responsible for setting high level policies or the common standards that should be followed by different different domains the next step is to develop and enforce shared standards and policies 
to define shared data standards and protocols that ensure the consistency and interoperability between domains. This might include data formats, APIs, and the metadata standards. The fourth step is to implement coordination and integration mechanisms. So there should be some communication channels for the interaction between domains and the central governance teams as well, which could help in ensuring some issues and sharing some best practices and coordinating efforts. Okay, so next one is integration tools. Provide some tools and platforms that facilitate data integration and sharing between domains. This should also include data cataloging tools, data pipelines, and data integration frameworks. Okay. So this was the fourth principle that was the federated governance principles that ensure that policies and there should be common standards for different different domains and for the whole organization as well. Now let us see some real life use cases of the data mesh. So we have first use case, which is financial service fraud detection. So bank implements a data mesh to ensure that a data should be remain consistent across different different accounts and the branches in the real time and uh, the bank also implements uh, the data mesh so that they can monitor and trans keep track of the transactions across the different different accounts so by detecting unusual patterns or anomalies the banks can identify and prevent fraudulent activities from the organization healthcare patient care Okay, so healthcare provider uses data mesh to combine patient data from the electronic health records and there are some variable devices and the medical emergencies that provides us the uh, data, how we can fetch the data from the devices through the health records. So basically we have distributed data uh, across different different devices and different different records that's been stored in the devices. This integrates the data helps in providing personalized treatment plans, improving patient outcomes and optimizing hospital operations. The third one is telecommunications network optimization. So telecommunication companies deploys a data mesh to collect and analyze the data from the network traffic and customer service integrations and device usage. So it helps in identifying the performance issues, predicting network congestion and optimizing service delivery to improve the customer satisfaction. We have also one more that is customer targeting. So as we discussed about the e-commerce applications, so there are multiple e-commerce applications or multiple organization that follows the data mesh so that data could be more effectively organized within the organization by analyzing the behaviors of the customers and their preferences and demographic information. This enables businesses to offer personalized interactions and create marketing campaigns that are specifically tailored to individual customer needs. So these were some of the real life use cases of the data mesh. There are other use cases of the data mesh as well. And we can also implement data mesh by organizing different, different domains within the organization. So that's all. Anyone has any questions? from the four principles that we discuss and the real life use cases. Anyone? Has uh, any no doubt? Sale, not from my side. Okay. Okay, Sahil, I guess no one is having any queries as of now. So I request everyone that in case you're having any queries further, then you can surely reach out to Sahil on Teams and he'll be happy to answer your queries and then and there. With this, I guess we are good to wrap up. Thank you, Sahil, for delivering the session today and thank you everyone for joining. Please do not forget to share your feedbacks with us. Thank you.